Hello folks, me again. Right, here's the next unboxing. And um, this is our second album, Blood Money's second album that we did. Uh, it's reissued again, two different versions of, as with the uh, red one and bleeding one. And um, hold on, let me get a coffee. Cheers. Right, so we got two albums of Battle Scarred, our second album. This is the better one, I thought. What we got on the back here, got an extra track on there as well from the 1987 BBC Radio 1 session. That's an extra version of Caligula. See it there? Look at us all on the back. That's me, my trusty sword, Dale. Brett with his chainsaw, it was, it was like that. <laughs> and there's Graeme, guitarista. Yeah, battle scarred, cool. Right, what we got here then? There we go. So if we open it up, we've got a new, the cover's better quality than it was when we were with Ebony Records. Again, this is with Heavy Forces. I don't know if you can see the logo there. Heavy Forces records, so it'll be on there. Now, I said on the Red Roar and Bleeding one, it was a couple of years ago when we had our 30 years anniversary. But I think it was actually 2016. So that's four years ago, wasn't it? Where's that time gone, dude? Once again, first 200. Came with a sew-on patch. You got me a sew-on patch. And here we've got another wonderful poster. Yeah, cool, isn't it? Grammy did all that, good man. And there, in the bottom, the same as on the cover, you got the uh, Red Roar and Bleeding album cover, sticking out all the blood and the guns at the bottom of there. That was inspired, that cover, by um, the film Terminate with Arnie, which had just come out. I'll be back. Sarah Connor, where is Sarah Connor? Oh, here's the inside cover, look at this. Got again the big logo. Looks better on the black, doesn't it? Hey, <laughs> and you got some photos on the back there. There you go. We used to walk around like that in the 80s. <laughs> it was ace. We didn't give a shit. It was brilliant. And um, yeah, this, this one here at night, I remember when we did that. This was inside the rehearsal room. That was up on the seventh store. We used to do gigs sometimes on the seventh floor. You come back from doing a gig, it was in this old mill called Beehive Mills, and that's where um, Manchester got the, uh, the bee as its emblem from. That, that's, that's a bee, that is, that I'm drawing there in the sky. They got the emblem from the bee because of the Beehive Mill, where everyone was working like little bees. That's where it came from. Anyway, it was seven stories up, it was dilapidated, it stank a piss. <laughs> you quite often find drunkards asleep in different rooms, and our rehearsal room and all bands' rehearsals were up on the top floor, so it's seven stories up. And you, you do a gig, you know, you, you do a gig somewhere and you're absolutely knackered and you pile everything in the van and you drive back. <laughs> you, you get back to about two in the morning, you get back to the uh, rehearsal room to unload all your gear. And the bloody uh, lift is broken. So you, <laughs> you gotta carry all this gear and the drum cases up seven flights of stairs to the top. Oh, what pain that was. It was good fun though, we wouldn't, wouldn't swap it. We wouldn't swap those days. <laughs> The behind mills. Oh, you see all the memories come back, you see. There we go, that's side two, that's side A. Now, unlike on the originals, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I need another coffee. Unlike the original albums from Ebony Records, these don't have the track listing on the actual LP itself. I don't know what these sound like, I don't have a record player anymore. But um, there you go. That's Battle Scarred's second album. You've got the first track, Battle Scarred, then Wolf Boat. That was about German um, U boats. Battle Scarred was about, um, wasn't, I don't think it was called it at the time, post traumatic stress disorder, you know, when soldiers come back from war, that sort of thing. And you've got Wolf Boat, Mutant, The Legend of Garty. <laughs> that was about, uh, I think I did the lyrics to that one. It's all about this. Um, Apparently there's, a, there's a, a breed of people that are in, in impressively intelligent and superior to us, um, allegedly the old Atlanteans, and they live underneath the world's surface. 
It's got to be true, that, isn't it? <laughs> Then we've got Carnal House, House of Death. Oh, House of Death when we recorded that. We wanted to have all this um, maniacal laughter at the end. Um, <laughs> and we were all laughing at him. We couldn't get it right. So I says, let's, uh, Gray and the guitarist was dead sickly. <laughs> so his girlfriend, Sue at the time, told us, bless the cotton socks, rest in peace, Sue. Um, she told him he was dead tickly, so we grabbed hold of him, got a mic on him and held him down and just tickled him. <laughs> and you can hear him <gasps> screaming with laughter. <laughs> Not really a house of death, but oh, it's killing that was shapeshifter. That was my favourite track. That was proper metal, that. Caligula. I think Graeme wrote that one. Dude, you know I have trouble remembering lyrics. He wrote so many lyrics in that one. Bird or Beast, that was about originally called Gargoyle, that was. Uh, Atlantis, a similar theme coming up there that I'm doing, Evil Bitch, that's about the witch Baba Yaga. And then you've got Caligula again, recorded at the BBC Radio 1 sessions in 1987. And you've got, um, you've got a thanks list on here that we did. This is the original thanks list we did in the day. Special thanks to Chris Tetley. Chris Tetley, he was, um, he was a rock DJ on Peter Lee Manchester Radio. And, and he seemed a nice guy, but apparently he um, got sent to prison for um, being a pedo. Who knew? What a dick. Um, more, I can't remember half of these. Blah, 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 blah. Music market and altering. It's an old music shop that used to help us out with stuff. Loads of stuff going on there. Brilliant. So this is the... Uh, that's the first one. Now what's in the second one? Because there are two versions. So what's the second version? What's the second version we've got going on here? That's my Yorkshire voice, that one. I like doing accents, by the way. That's the same poster. Marvellous. And it comes complete, complete with a plain block back, plain background for your notes. <laughs> you see that in books when you get them. This page has been left blank intentionally for your notes. <laughs> oh, hey. Are you ready? Look at this. Red vinyl. That's blood colour, isn't it? Look at that. Red vinyl. That's quite sexy, that. So those are the two versions of Battle Scarred, our second album. Um, I don't think there's much else to tell you on that. <laughs> Apart from... <laughs> Tickling gravy. <laughs> I had a bit of Jack Daniels on that day as well, so we got a bit got a bit stupid. And um, in the hall, they had, they had, I think I said yesterday, oh, I can't see anything. They had all those um, knights in armour on horses. I'm sure there's pictures of it somewhere. Um, and we always do pictures hanging off these knights like this, and grabbing the swords off out of them and running around whacking each other. They were all blunted, of course, but you know, quite big bruises on your arm. Happy days, it was fun. Right, so there you go. Blood Money, Battle Scar, two versions. Heavy Forces Records. There you go. Oh, that was another one we did when we were recording this. We stayed at a pub in Selby. So it's the memories coming back. We stayed at a pub in Selby when we were recording it. And um, they'd finished all their music that uh, the band had. So the next day was me putting all the vocals down. So I wanted an early night, so I was in bed by midnight. And the other, the other lot, they all went out. And then they found this pub that was doing a lock-in lock in, in Selby. And um, I think they got a bit drunk and it was middle of winter. I think it was something like minus eight or something like that, it was really cold. Um, don't think it was snowing at the time. But I'd gone to bed. And I had to have this Caligas heater on while I was in bed. So I left my window a little bit open. And it was those windows that, you know, you, you lift up like that. I was fast asleep. And bearing what I was like at the time, you know, there you go. Swords and all sorts of things. I did loads of martial arts at the time as well. And um, so I was asleep in bed and I heard, I heard some dickhead trying to break in through my window that was open. You know, so I jumps out of bed, grabs hold of them, pulls them over, drink, and he's going, wait, hold on, mate, hold on, it's Brett, it's Brett. And it was Brett. So pub that we were staying in had locked everything up and locked the band out and they couldn't get in and they found my window was open 
<laughs> so, so Brett climbs up the drain pipe across this little wall thing and then tries to climb in through the window. Good job I didn't have my earplugs in, didn't it? <laughs> anyway, happy days. I'll say cheerio, swig of coffee. Be strong, be safe. Don't take yourself too seriously. And don't forget to dick about, because the life's too short. Cheerio! Oh, here we go, there's the button. Come on, get, get the button. No, it's not there, it's there. Ah! Uh.